All right, we're going to take care of a little housekeeping. Thank you. Uh, I, I don't want anyone to ever think that just because I don't say thank you uh, that I'm not grateful. I just forget. So I want to make sure right now while it's on my mind that I say thank you to the great staff here at Texas Night Live, including the DJ who uh, I love a lot. He's funny, but he needs to turn that damn music down just a little. That's it. Getting your last shot, Chris. Chris Whalen, our DJ, funny guy, very talented, very happy to have him. Yay! Yay! Quincy and Ray Rutledge, Teresa Rutledge back there, even, even Taylor and Jordan who pitch in, Sean here, everybody who helps love this furniture on and off the stage, set this room up. A uh, big round of applause for these guys. Uh, uh, I want to thank our food sponsors, Texas Roadhouse, a great pulled pork. And, um, who is our other sponsor? Okay. Oh, what is the sponsor? Ah! Um, the, the, the spot. The spot. The spot. The top. The box. We're at the dyslexic the table. So, I appreciate our food sponsors for uh, keeping you guys fed. <laughs> I, I want to thank a couple of our sponsors. Uh, these great chairs we're sitting in, uh, provided by Wilson Office Supply. I have one of these chairs Dude. from Wilson Office Supply <laughs> in my office. Cha Just ordered three new chairs from Wilson Office Supply, and they came in a couple weeks ago. They're awesome. Because Skipping that spot, I think awesome. we just covered that. They're awesome. <laughs> Unsolicited endorsement. No, they're very good. Uh, Bill and Chill is another great sponsor of the show. Uh, great drive-through convenience store just around the corner from where we are. Uh, hot food. Uh, great low prices, convenient drive through uh, Danny Foy is a well-known and respected businessman here in town. Uh, Phil and Sean is health probably check him out. Craig and Karaoke, our newest sponsor. Uh, in fact, that's where I'm going to suggest we all go after we wrap up our uh, <laughs> shenanigans here. Uh, they're on Shepherd Access Road uh, at, at the intersection of uh, Scott Street. Seven days a week, up until 2 a.m., 50,000 songs. Uh, the only seven-day week karaoke club. That's hard to say with pizza residue in your mouth. It's kind of dangerous. Cranky karaoke, find them on Facebook. The law offices of Bruce Harris. Now, was this a score or what? <laughs> this, is, this is the most unique assembly of sponsors I think I've ever seen. I'm here to say, these are, these are cutting edge progressive advertisers. Clearly, clearly you did not get them all together in the same room when you, when you launched this sponsorship. She's like, wait, what, huh? <laughs> Or have any of them even seen the show? Do they even know that Bruce has been on the show? So, Bruce Harris, family law, criminal law, personal injury, check him out. Find him at bruceharrislaw.com. We'll get the rest of our sponsors here a little bit. Everybody, Susan Knowles Martin, give a round of applause. Um, as we already alluded, uh, already alluded to, uh, Susan is known to the community uh, as the sports director at KFDX for 10 or 11 years. About five years ago, you went over to uh, North Texas Rehab Hospital. Yes. And there she became the shepherd organizer guru, one woman show of uh, putting on the annual Texas Ranch Roundup fundraiser, which will be the, the focus of our conversation uh, while we're up here. But before we get to that, Susan is starting a new job. Yes. Right after the, the Ranch Roundup, which is what, what weekend is that? That's going to be August 17th and 18th. Okay. After that, uh, she leaves North Texas Rehab Hospital to join the Wichita Falls Chamber of Commerce. Yes. And your official title will be? I'm actually Vice President. Woo! Vice President of Community-Wide Marketing. And it's for the Pride in the Falls campaign. Uh, it was started about three years ago to really kind of bring together uh, the marketing effort uh, and unify the city, the chamber, downtown development, the CVB, and just coordinate all of that effort to really benefit those four entities. And in, you know, internally, and as far as Wichita Falls, it's to create this sense of pride among the folks that live here, uh, that this is a great place to live, and that we do have a lot to offer, and that there is a, a low cost of living, and it is a, a good family atmosphere. And then externally, to let folks know that this is a good place to bring their businesses, their events, uh, to come visit for the weekend. And, and so it's, it's just kind of a, a two-fold campaign, and we hope to continue that. Uh, into our phase two campaign which we'll launch this fall. To me, I think the thing that is most missing, and it's not really anyone's fault because the way the economy has so rapidly evolved in the last three or four years, is I think the greatest service that anybody who wants to play the role of Chamber of Commerce or Economic Development or anything like that, is 
a, a, a blueprint, some sort of cooperative effort to help all these people in the new economy who are starting their own businesses, starting small businesses, starting home-based businesses, find a way to, to uh, access resources, to get business plans, to, uh, to leverage what they have. Uh, I think too often the energy and, and intellectual resources focused on a model that maybe not exists anymore of mm -hmm. uh, brick and mortar stores or you know even manufacturing. Well now we've even gone kind of a further away, a step further away from that model where this is, this is information based, it's is service based, it's home based. And there's really not a model to follow, and, and very few resources to draw from locally. Well, I think probably the best for that is uh, Midwestern State has, I think, a very good program uh, that kind of caters to the small business. But, like you said, I think that definitely I agree with you in that sense. But first and foremost, we do have to get more business here to allow us to have the dollars to be able to do those things. And so, you know, we've lost some big businesses in the last few yeah. years here in Wichita Falls, and it's really, you know, affected. Takes around Ranch Roundup is what? Give us a... Uh, well, the Texas go. Ranch Roundup started 32 years ago. It was actually uh, some folks from some ranches and some folks locally uh, really wanted to create an event that showcased what real cowboys do every day on the ranch. You know, we have the, the regular rodeos with the bull riding and all that, but we really didn't have anything that brought that ranch life to the city. And so they kind of organized this Ranch Roundup event and one of the things that the ranches wanted to do was, well, first of all, make sure that everybody involved were real working cowboys. And second was to benefit the people in the communities that they live in. Most of these ranches at the time were from West Texas and around our area. And so they chose three charities, the North Texas Rehab Center, which uh, is where I work. Right, that, what kind of work does the rehab center do? The rehab center provides physical, occupational speech and aquatic therapy, uh, as well as academic therapy and early childhood intervention to not only children, babies, but also adults. And we provide that care regardless of their ability to pay. Um, and so we, we benefit along with uh, the West Texas Rehab Center in Abilene and the West Texas Boys Ranch. And that's the way it was started 32 years ago, and that's the way it exists still today. Have the, uh, what areas do they compete in? With, uh, there's bronc riding, calf doctoring. What? Hold, what? <laughs> calf doctoring? We, we don't actually do these. This sounds surgical. Doctoring, but we Poor do the calves. semblance of the doctoring. What does that mean? Uh, honestly, I, I'm not... Uh, well, you, you basically, you, you rope them, and then you get off the get off your horse, and you actually tie them down, and you don't really get to the point where you do the, the dirty stuff. But, oh. but you do almost do. <laughs> you almost do. But, well, you know. There are uh, kids. Yes. Team, team penning, team branding, and wild cow milking, which is the best. Wait, team penning? Team penning is when there are, there are a herd down at one end of the arena, and they each have numbers on them, and the announcer will announce a number, and the cowboys have to pick three, um, three cows out of the herd that have that number on their back, pull them out while leaving these cattle down here, and bring them down and get them into a pen again. So this is herding cats, literally. Uh, it, and, and, uh, and so those five events, on top of that, they also have to do talent and ranch cooking. Now this is the interesting part. There's, there's, there's photography, painting and drawing, arts and crafts, western handiwork, and furniture and home decor. There's five categories. They pick three that they want to compete in, and there's music and skit. Then, oh, that's right. The mu music and skit. I, right. judge, I judged the musical and skit performance yes. last year, and I will tell you this with all sincerity and all of it was 20 pounds of corning in a 10 pound bag. Yeah. It was, it was yeah. like, there was more wholesomeness per square inch. It was just so... But remember, this is, I mean, everybody involved works on that ranch, know, is related to someone. I mean, it's not... The, it's you know, a big deal. Uh, the photography is unbelievable. I mean, these are folks that are just, you know, ranch hand wives, or there might be someone filling it. But the photography is incredible. I've got some ranches this year. You know, they make their own spurs, make their own saddles. I have someone that's making their own knife this year. It's unbelievable. But it is, they also have to cook over an open flame on the chuck wagon, and we give them the menu. The menu rotates every four years. This year it's stew, beans, uh, cobbler, and cornbread. And so they, they have to cook it in the Dutch oven over the open flame as if they would on the ranch, and, um, and then turn it into us and we just Now this is one of the few events, guys, that that occupies every square inch of impact. It does, we're the only event that uses every single okay, the, square the only inch. Only one. Of impact. I thought maybe hotter than hell no. had grown to that point, but 
the, the, the Ag Center, the Exhibit Hall, and the Coliseum are wall to wall filled with this event. Yes. It's, a, it's a really, I think, I think that's one of the reasons why I want to make sure we emphasize this is even people who live here don't have, a lot of people don't have a notion of how comprehensive these categories are, how many people are involved, what a monumental effort it is, uh, how many people come through the gates, and the number is. Want, is it? It's about 25,000 because we, in addition to that, we have the Pittsburgh Western Collectible Show. We're the largest um, event or trade show type event, um, but we have more booths than any other, more than Christmas Magic, more than anybody. We have over 200 booths. And this lot. event raises how much money a year? Um, well, I'm proud to say that last year, for the first time in a 31 year history, we raised over $300,000. In a year. So, I mean, that's a, a pretty spectacular number. We are going to play the uh, the game. Uh, have you been doing a question and answer game? Or you no, know? I don't. I don't. Uh, first of all, uh, who's getting up higher ranked at the end of the season, Florida or Texas? Oh gosh. Oh. Well, I mean, I, uh, they're they're equally going to be mediocre. Let's just. You think say so? that. I think so. Um, in wrestling. I, you know, in what? In, in, in wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> but one thing I do know is either way. The national championship will come through the SEC once again. Oh, well, well. Better. but uh, I, I think you know Florida is Florida is once again in a rebuilding year. It's it's going to be you know I mean their defense will be okay and Texas's defense will will be good. But who's going to be their quarterback? Because nobody's really kind of stepped up and. I think uh, I think I, I'm going to go on record. Texas is going to win ten games. And they'll okay. kill Penn State. <laughs> 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 You know, yeah, this is all well, about red meat to you. Texas. <laughs> the easy kill. Texas may win 10 games, but one of them will not be to OU this year. That's oh, I think they're going to beat OU. You think they're going to beat OU? Yeah. Okay. Oh, they're not even going to beat OS. No. No, they're going to beat OS. <laughs> no. Not this I think year. Texas has to worry about West Virginia. A lot of people But, you know, the biggest thing is, once again, LSU, Alabama are going to be two top teams, and USC's back in the mix because they're off of the probation and they're bowl eligible, and Olin Kiffin has been cheating his ass off the last four <laughs> years just to get it back just in the Ritz. So he'll be right back in there. Um, so it's, I mean, in Oregon, Oregon will be in a, you know. So how about Penn practice. State? Uh, what do you think about what happened to them? You know, here's the thing about Penn State. Do I do I agree that, you know, they, they deserve, you know, what they got? But the problem you have now is that if you're going to go at them for lack of institutional control over this huge blown out story, you're not going to have to go over every program in the country that has kids that are getting arrested. I mean, there have been plenty of college football programs that have 15, 20 kids arrested in a season for, for you know, are you, oh, going yeah. to go, are you going to go in and say, you know, hey, you guys have lack of institutional control. You guys are, you know, letting these guys run around. I just think you've set a precedent that well, now you're um, going to have to really, really... I, you know, people, I think people may say that, but when you actually start having the specific discussion and say, okay, whatever was going on, oh, he's a bad example because they were shooting up the joint there for, <laughs> oh, oh, you might have been. And Ricky Williams was it? might have been, no, <laughs> not that one was at your team, but, <laughs> okay. but I think once you, once you actually start talking particulars, Penn State is in this league of its own. Oh, well, absolutely. And no, 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 think, no, no, no. I'm so not we, saying that everyone deserves no, that so, of a penalty. You know, what, but I'm saying now you're going to have to scrutinize. Well, and, you know, you and know. people, I think, will try to invite that it's fair, it's not fair comparison. But when you actually say, okay, let's actually compare, you have to go a long way into... No, I, I completely agree. I Especially, completely you know, agree. And the, the, the nail on the coffin was the, the un, undeniable link that Joe Paterno had to the whole thing. Right. Yeah, you know, there's the guy who had the power to to make it stop and he did and, yeah. and, and it was just absolutely black and white done what's odd to me is that it's clear that he kind of you know it's clear to me that the moment he stopped coaching there obviously there was probably some sort of exchange because it's right about the time when when the first incident happened that you know he basically said okay well, you need to go run your program we're not going to have you as a coach here but then he still let him come back. I mean, come around. That's what's odd to me. He's like, okay, I'm going to well, get you out of the It shows the whole insidious nature of environments that, <laughs> that allow that kind of behavior to happen. Yeah. Like, you want to forget. You want it to not be true. And you want to go about your business. And you're willing to say, okay, well, you know, unless it's just right in front of you and you're forced to do the right thing, it's easy to just sort of go, well, I'm sure it's better now. Yeah.